Hi everyone. All right, we're back with the Phantom Tollbooth and last chapter, Milo talking the humbug, finally, finally, finally found uh, Princess's Rhyme and Princess's, the Princess's Rhyme and Reason. And um, they were up in the castle in the air and remember from below the demons who wouldn't go up the corkscrew spiraling staircase, they instead chopped the stairwell down so that it was no longer connected to the ground and the castle in the air was floating off. Um, and Milo realized that time flies, another idiom, and so we asked Tok if he could fly them to safety. And so that's where we left off with Tok with the princess's rhyme and reason on his back, Milo holding on to Tok's tail, and the humbug holding on to Milo's ankles, kind of flapping around like the tail of a kite. So chapter 19. The Return of Rhyme and Reason. Sailing past three of the tallest peaks, and just over the outstretched arms of the grasping demons, they reached the ground and landed with a sudden jolt. Quick, urged Tok. Follow me! We'll have to run for it! With the princesses still on his back, he galloped down the rocky trail, and not a moment too soon. For... Pounding down the mountainside in a cloud of clinging dust and a chorus of chilling shrieks came all of the loathsome creatures who chose to live in ignorance and who had waited so very impatiently. Faster! shouted Tok. They're closing in on us! Down from the heights they raced, the humbug with one hand on his hat and the other flailing desperately in the air. Milo running as he had never run before, and the demons just a little bit faster than them behind. From, from off on the right, his heavy, bulbous body lurching dangerously on the skinny, spindly legs which barely supported him, came the overbearing know-it-all, talking continuously. A dismal demon who was mostly mouth, he was ready at a moment's notice to offer misinformation on any subject, and, while he often tumbled heavily, he was, it was never he who was hurt, but rather the unfortunate person on whom he fell. Next to him, but just a little behind, came the gross exaggeration, whose grotesque features and thoroughly unpleasant manners were hideous to see, and whose rows of wicked teeth were made only to mangle the truth. They hunted together and were bad luck to anyone they caught. Closer and closer they came, and along with the other demons, bumping and jolting each other, clawing and snorting in their eager fury. Tok staggered along bravely with rhyme and reason. Milo's lungs now felt ready to burst as he stumbled down the trail, and the humbug was slowly falling behind. Gradually, the path grew broader and more flat as it reached the bottom of the mountain, and it turned toward wisdom. Ahead lay, lay light and safety but perhaps just a bit too far away. And down came the demons from everywhere, frenzied creatures of darkness, lurching wildly toward their prey. From off in the rear, the terrible trivium and the wobbly gelatinous giant urged them on with glee, and pounding forward with a rush came the ugly dilemma, snorting steam and looking intently for someone to catch on the ends of his long pointed horns, while his hooves bit eagerly at the ground. The exhausted humbug swayed and tottered on his rubbery legs, a look of anguish on his face. I don't think I can, he gasped as a jagged slash of lightning ripped open the sky and the thunder stole his words. Closer and closer the demons loomed as the desperate chase neared its end. Then, gathering themselves for one final leap, they prepared to engulf first the bug, then the boy, and lastly the dog and his two passengers. They rose as one and... and suddenly stopped, as if frozen in midair, unable to move, staring ahead in terror. Milo slowly raised his weary head, and there, in the horizon, for as far as the eye could see, stood the massive armies of wisdom, the sun glistening from their swords and shields, and their bright banners slapping proudly in the wind. 
For a moment, everything was silent. Then a thousand trumpets sounded. Then a thousand more. And like an ocean wave, the long line of horsemen advanced, slowly at first, then faster and faster, until with a gallop and a shout, which was music to Milo's ears, they swept forward toward the horrified demons. There in the lead was King Az, his dazzling armor embossed with every letter in the alphabet, and with him, the math magician brandishing a freshly sharpened staff. From his tiny wagon, Dr. Discord hurled explosion after explosion to the delight of the soundkeeper, while the busy din collected them almost at once. And in honor of the occasion, Chroma, the great, led his orchestra in a stirring display of patriotic colors. Everyone Milo had met during his journey had come to help. The men from the marketplace, the miners of Digitopolis, and all the good people from the valley and the forest. The spelling bee buzzed excitedly overhead, shouting, Charge! C-H-A-R-G-E! Charge! C-H-A-R-G-E! Canby, who, as everyone knew, was as cowardly as can be, came all the way from conclusions to show that he also could be as brave as can be. And even Officer Shrift, remember him? Who, put, who first put Milo and Tok in the dungeon? Even he, mounted proudly on a long, low dog, galloped grimly along. Cringing with fear, the monsters of ignorance turned away in flight, and with terrified cries too horrible to forget, returned to the damp, dark places from which they came. The humbug sighed with relief, and Milo and the princesses prepared to greet the victorious army. Well done, stated the Duke of Definition, dismounting and grasping Milo's hand warmly. Fine job, seconded the Minister of Meaning. Good work, added the Count of Connotation. Congratulations, proposed the Earl of Essence. Cheers, recommended the Undersecretary of Understanding. And since that's exactly what everyone felt like doing, that's exactly what everyone did. It's, it's we who should thank, began Milo when the shouting had stopped. But before he could finish, they had unrolled an enormous scroll. Henceforth and forwith, let it be known by all men that rhyme and reason reign once more in wisdom. The two princesses bowed gratefully and warmly kissed their brothers, and they all agreed that a very fine thing had happened. And furthermore, continued the proclamation, the boy named Milo, the dog known as Tuck, and the insect hereinafter referred to as the Humbug, are hereby declared to be heroes of the realm. Cheer after cheer filled the air, and even the bug seemed a bit embarrassed at having so much attention paid to him. Therefore, concluded the duke, in honor of their glorious deed, a royal holiday is declared. Let there be parades through every city in the land, and a huge carnival of three days' duration, consisting of jousts, games, feasts, and folly. The five cabinet members then rolled up the large parchment, and with many bows, retired. Swift horsemen carried the news to every corner of the kingdom, and as the parade slowly wound its way through the countryside, crowds of people wound its way, or crowds of people gathered to cheer it along. Garlands of flower, flowers hung from every house and shop and carpeted the streets. Even the air shimmered with excitement, and shutters that had been closed for many years were thrown open to let the brilliant sunlight shine where it hadn't shone in so long. Milo, Tok, and the now subdued humbug sat proudly in the royal carriage with Azaz, the math magician, and the two princesses. And the parade stretched for miles in both directions. As the cheering continued, Ryan leaned forward and touched Milo gently on the arm. They're shouting for you, she said with a smile. But I could never have done it, Milo objected, without everyone else's help. That may be true, said Reason, but you had the courage to try, 
And what you can do is often simply a matter of what you are willing to do. That's why, said AZAZ, there was one very important thing about your quest that we couldn't discuss with you until you returned. I remember, said Milo eagerly. Tell me now. It was impossible, said the math magician looking at the king. Do you mean, stammered the humbug, who suddenly felt a bit faint. Yes, indeed, they repeated together. But if we'd told you then, you might not have gone. And as you've discovered, so many things are possible just as long as you don't know that they are impossible. And for the remainder of the ride, Milo did not utter a sound. Finally, when they'd reached a broad, flat plain midway between Dictionopolis and Digitopolis, somewhat to the right of the Valley of Sound and a little to the left of the Forest of Sight, the long line of carriages and horsemen stopped and the great carnival began. Happy, happily striped tents and pavilions sprang up everywhere as the workmen scurried around like ants. Within minutes there were race courses and grandstands, sideshows and refreshment booths, gaming fields, a ferris wheel, banners, bunting, and bedlam, almost without pause. The math magician provided a continuous display of brilliant fireworks made up of exploding numbers which multiplied and then divided with breathtaking results. The noise was created by a deliriously happy Dr. Discord. Thanks to the soundkeeper, there was music and laughter for very brief moments, even a little silence. Alec Bings, remember him? Set up an enormous telescope and invited everyone to see the other side of the moon. And the humbug wandered through the crowd accepting congratulations and recounting in great detail his brave exploits, most of which grew immeasurably with each telling. And each evening, just at sunset, a royal banquet was held. There was everything imaginable to eat. King AZAZ had ordered a special supply of delicious words in all flavors, and for those who liked exotic foods, in all languages too. The math magician had provided innumerable platters of division dumplings, which Milo was careful to avoid, for no matter how many you ate, when you finished, there was more on your plate than when you began. And, of course, following the meal came songs, epic poems, and speeches in praise of the princesses and the three gallant adventurers who had rescued them. King AZAZ and the math magician pledged, or promised, that every year at the same time they would lead their armies to the mountains of ignorance until not one demon remained. And everyone agreed that no finer carnival, for no finer reason, had ever been held in wisdom. But even things as fine as all that must end sometime. And late on the afternoon of the third day, the tents were struck, the pavilions were folded, and everything was packed, ready to leave. It's time to go now, said Reason, for there is much to do. And as she spoke, Milo remembered his home for the first time. He wanted very much to go back, yet somehow he could not bear the thought of leaving. And so you must say goodbye, said Rhyme, patting him gently on the cheek. To everyone, said Milo unhappily. He looked around slowly at all the friends he'd made, and he looked very hard so to not forget any of them for even an instant but mostly he looked at Talk and the Humbug, with whom he had shared so much. The peril, the dangers, the fear, and best of all, the victory. Never had anyone had two more loyal, steadfast companions. Can't you both come with me? And he, Milo asked, knowing the answer as he said it. I'm afraid not, old man, replied the bug. I'd like to, but I've arranged a lecture tour, which will keep me occupied for several years, and in the big bucks. And they need, they do need a watchdog here, barked Talk sadly. Milo embraced or hugged the bug, who in his most typical fashion was heard to mumble gruffly, Bah! But whose damp eyes told a different story. Then the boy threw his arms around Talk's neck, 
and, for just a moment, held on very tightly. Thank you for everything you've taught me, said Milo to everybody as a tear rolled down his cheek. And thank you for what you've taught us, said the king, and as he clapped his hands, the little car was brought forward, polished like new. Milo got in and with one last look started down the road with everyone waving him on. Goodbye, he shouted. Goodbye, I promise I'll be back. Goodbye, shouted AZAZ. -AZ. Always remember the importance of words and numbers, added the math magician forcefully. Surely you don't think numbers are as important as words, he heard AZAZ -AZ shout from the distance. Is that so? replied the math magician a little more faintly. Why if? Oh dear, thought Milo. I do hope they don't start it all over again. And in a moment, they had faded from sight as the road dipped, turned, and headed for home. The final chapter, chapter 20, Goodbye and Hello, will be next time.